All right, Cyclocross fans, we're back here with Sven Ness. Welcome. Thanks. So we got you in the seat. This is Crosstalk. We like to take it outside the race a little bit, go back in time, talk about who you are off the bike, how you got into the sport. So take me all the way back to the small child of Sven Ness. Where did you grow up? What was life like before you found cycling? Well, I grew up in a, in a small town um, with a lot of kids who have done in that part of uh, my uh, my life at uh, they they done BMX mm -hmm. small bikes um, have some fun on the bike and I start with uh, with a bit of competition um, and it's get better getting better and better and I had some results national champion and I went to the Europeans the worlds and um, I've done it from my five until my 15 years uh, and then I started with uh, with cyclocross so uh, because of um, at that time, BMX was not an Olympic sport, mm -hmm. so it was going down a bit in Belgium. The popularity of the of the sport was going down, and I need to find something else where I can uh, use my skills. Um, and cyclocross was something, um, yeah, that that was a bit comparing uh, BMX. It was a little bit longer, another bike, but uh, mm -hmm. yeah, at that time we had a lot of good cyclocross riders. Um, uh, pros who were uh, uh, world champion and then uh, we watched them on TV and then I said okay I want to try it and that's the beginning of the story and uh, I didn't know uh, how long it's gonna take uh, but but at that time it was just for fun. What kind of outside of bike racing what kind of kid were you? I mean in school with your friends what were you like? Well I went to school because I need to went to <laughs> I need to go to school but uh, I, I, I love to ride my bike and, and um, I studied, bec but um, as an uh, electricity, uh, my, my, my dad is uh, doing electricity. Mm -hmm. uh, he has his own uh, company. And yeah, when I um, started, uh, before I was a professional, I worked with him. Um, but then he said, yeah, you have the talent. Try to, uh, to find out if it's possible to, uh, to ride it as a pro. And um, so, yeah. I, I, I went to school, but for me, in my mind, it was always, oh, I nice. want to be a professional cyclist. And did you ever dabble in any other sports? Was there, I mean, a great athlete in, in one sport could arguably be a great athlete in a lot of different sports. All I done was, um, yeah, bike. was riding my bike. Yeah. Um, it could be <coughs> riding in BMX or, or on the road or mountain bike or uh, cyclocross, but yeah, the skills of cyclocross fits me the best. Mm -hmm. Coming into, when you transitioned from BMX, I assume you still, I mean, you rode bikes on the road. Uh, you probably started mountain biking at some point. Uh, did you stick with cyclocross because you felt that's where you were the best or was it the most fun or? Um, it was the most popular sport uh, yeah. in Belgium. Um, of course, also the road races, but um, what uh, comparing BMX was the most popular sport was cyclocross. Um, for me, the struggling um, was the distance because like a BMX has 300 meters, uh, mm -hmm. full sprint, a lot of technique. But yeah, cyclocross is, is, a, is also distance. And uh, that was the hardest part for me because um, I was riding my bike and it was fun, but now I need to train and I need to, to, to train on distance to, to be the best in that sport. Mm -hmm. and, um, I struggled a bit, but uh, year by year it's getting better and better. Um, and my first national title was as a junior. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, at, um, I felt myself every year stronger and stronger. And then um, on a certain point in Munich um, in 1997, I was first time world champion mm -hmm. uh, under 23. And then it all starts. Uh, I signed a contract um, in the Rabobank team. Uh, I yeah, then my career starts. When at a later point in your career, you, you began to think about mountain biking as an avenue yeah. to maybe go to the Olympics. When BMX was announced as an Olympic sport, did any part of you say, maybe I could jump It was too late back? at that time. The sport is, is uh, changing a lot also mm -hmm. um, in that uh, time. So for me, it was better to think about mountain bike uh, than uh, to go back to BMX. Um, I was also a distance athlete uh, at that time. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I raced the classics on the road uh, with the Rabobank team, uh, Paris-Roubaix, uh, um, all, all uh, the classics in, in, uh, in Belgium. Mm -hmm. um, so I was a distance athlete at that time. And, and um, <coughs> with all my skills, I, I, uh, 
I won a lot of uh, GCs, I won a lot of races, mm -hmm. uh, uh, national titles as a, as a professional cycl uh, cyclocross rider. Um, but on a certain point, I was world champion uh, in um, St. Wendel the first time mm -hmm. as a pro. And I won everything I could dream of. And then I said, I need to have another goal. I need to do something to be motivated in the summer and, and um, yeah, to to have every year a development. Yeah. And then I say, uh, why not try to be an athlete on the Olympic Games mm -hmm. in another discipline? And it's really hard because I wanted to be the best in cyclocross, but I wanted to compete in the Olympic Games and start in the middle of the mountain bike season. Um, it's hard to stay in the back in the, in the, in the starting mm -hmm. grid and come back and taking points and it's, it's a hard way. But yeah, I, um, I went to the Olympics in Beijing and mm -hmm. um, I raced for the third spot, uh, but last uh, two laps I struggled a bit with the heat mm -hmm. and I was ninth. So I was really happy with that result in a discipline that's not mine. Yeah. Um, and it helped me to develop myself as a cyclocross rider also. And tell me, it, it, it seems like, especially over the last few years, a lot of the best cyclocross racers have been offered an opportunity to race on the road and have switched their focus and now they race very little cyclocross. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure at many points throughout your career um, you had offers to become a full-time road racer yeah. and probably a lot of teams that wanted you to just focus yeah. on the road and not race cyclocross. Uh, you probably could have been, we know you could have been just as good, you could yeah. have made just as much money. What ultimately kept you in the sport of cyclocross once you had sort of won worlds and won everything there was? I loved cyclocross, that's the first point. Uh, and I saw that when I was starting as a professional that the sport can grow a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. The difference here you see between now and when I started as a professional, that's, that's, that's another world. Um, mm -hmm. The technique, the speed, the bikes, uh, the interest of, of the press, um, the fans, uh, live on TV, everything changes. Uh, we can um, uh, earn also more money at now than, than 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. So, and I wanted to be one of the guys who helped the sport growing. And I loved my sports and that's the reason why I stay in cyclocross. I want to do something on the road and on the mountain bike, but my main goal was to be the best cyclocross rider all my career. Who's, I mean, you've had a long career now. Is there a single guy that was the toughest competitor you raced against? They asked me a lot, um, but all the guys who I raced with, they were completely different. Um, mm -hmm. But the rider who is, um, for me, the guy who is difficult to beat is Stibar. It's Denek Stibar, now mm -hmm. the, the reigning world champion, because he is thinking like I do. Um, mm -hmm. He has the technique, he has a lot of, um, he has a big engine, so he can uh, race on a high level one hour. Mm -hmm. um, there are guys who have the skills, but uh, they need to ride more um, on tactics, uh, mm -hmm. not one hour uh, full gas. And Stibar, when I tried to say to myself, okay, in, in that lap I'm gonna do a move, mm -hmm. He's thinking the same, same move, and that's difficult um, because he's younger and he's a little bit more ex explosive. Uh, when I was as young as Zdenek, uh, I had the same, but now I need to stay alert and do something before. Yeah, you so need to be he, smarter than yeah, him. I need to be smarter and it's, it's interesting uh, racing. Uh, that is something we saw at the World Championships. <coughs> um, the World Championships last year, it's all about how hard was the race, um, the weather circumstances. <laughs> That's uh, when, when it rains a little bit more, I think I had maybe some, some more chances to win the world title, but it was close and, and that's interesting racing. Tell me about in the point in your career when you started to notice uh, more US riders coming over to Europe and then ultimately start to be able to compete. Well, uh, what was the reception like as from the European audience as, as the US riders came over? Well, it starts really early. Um, uh, Tim Johnson was a guy who was at the podium uh, yeah. as, a, as, a, as a junior, I think. Yeah, U23. Uh, U23. Yeah. So we met him. He was uh, staying in Belgium, and that was the first guy 
who I met, who I talked with, and and uh, yeah, but that was another another period because then all the U.S. guys need to come to Europe to mm. race, but then you saw that because of Timothy, because of a few other riders, that cyclocross uh, developed here and there were more races and Timothy was not coming to Europe, he was staying in, in the US because sponsors want to see him race over here. Yeah. So you see that that uh, last years uh, there was a lot of, of races over here, a lot of in interest of sponsors, of the media and, and um, it, it are two different worlds mm -hmm. but now the big goal is to find a way to to have European riders here and the guys of the US coming over for the World Cups um, uh, in Europe and, and that's what, what the big goal is for the next few years but it was there a long time ago um, and it grows every year. It's been pretty well publicized that you've been a big advocate of uh, the globalization of cyclocross yeah. and riders in Europe traveling more often. Uh, it's been sort of a few years now since that sort of took traction. What's the What's the general consensus over there now? How, do, how are riders feeling today? If, you know, if it got announced that the World Cup would start in, in North America well, next year, would they be happy about that? Not all. Um, there are some guys who say, oh, I earn my money in Belgium. Why I need to, to travel to the US and do the races over there? And they don't think on a long time. They mm -hmm. think short time. I'm good now. I earn my money over here. And what happens in the US, it doesn't matter for me. But that's not right. You need to have young riders who are interested to come over here, to promote our sport over here, mm -hmm. uh, and it's necessary. The big goal needs to be that we are an Olympic sport, yeah. and we need to have more countries. We need we need to have more interest. Girls and women and, and, and boys need to be uh, equal. Um, in Europe, um, 15 years ago, there were no cyclocross races for women right um, it was a lot bigger here in the US where they earn the same money uh, price money than than the boys mm -hmm. there are a lot of races over here good riders also so and that's something strange for an organ uh, an organizer in in Belgium a women's race and and he needs to grow in, in, in and and that's the big goal is to being an Olympic sport and and then the sky is the limit. And then we are riding on another uh, dimension, on another. Uh, yeah, then then the sport is gonna explode. Does the does the sport of cyclocross belong in the Winter Olympics or the Summer Olympics? Winter Olympics, but they need to change a rule. Bec uh, it needs to be on snow and ice, mm -hmm. and it's not always on snow and ice cyclocross. Yeah. So yeah, that's something that needs to change. Um, Hopefully, uh, we can we we talk and we discuss a lot and and uh, we have a lot of meetings, but it's a long way. It's not for me, but it's for the younger generation. Speaking about women's racing over in Europe and women's development, do you think there's a sp uh, there should be a junior women's world championships and an under D twenty three women's world championships? That's something that we need to do in the future, but um, we need to grow slowly because um, the peloton is growing, but when the peloton is not big enough right then you can organize junior races but if you don't have uh, enough juniors then you are riding with five or ten riders mm -hmm. so you need to wait until the right moment when there are riders enough because now the, the the difference is too big they are really young and they need to ride against the professionals and that's hard but first you need to have a bigger peloton that you can split up and that you can say, okay, the development of the young girls. In the US, you can do it already. Mm -hmm. yeah. But in Europe, it's not always, because then you are have races on a Sunday um, afternoon with three or four girls. And that's, that's not good for the fans, it's not good for the girls also. So you need to wait until the right moment. Tell me about how much do, I'll just say you personally, how much do you keep an eye on the US racing scene uh, and just sort of the news coming out of the cyclocross season here throughout Internet the season. Internet is the best um, yeah. um, information uh, you can have. And I watch every weekend on, on, on the Monday mm -hmm. who won the race. Um, I follow you guys. I follow all the, the press uh, releases um, of cyclocross because I wanted to know 
how it goes with cyclocross all over the world. You watch uh, Sven Ness? Yeah. Tell me about the first time you saw those videos. What did you think? I was, I was yeah, surprised that they used my name to uh, show special skills in a race. Mm -hmm. And I'm really proud now. Um, hopefully we can, um, we can bring it to Europe because yeah, it's, it's something that, that can stay for a long time. Um, I'm proud yeah. and, and it's something, something special. Tell me, when you come to the US, uh, outside of racing, outside of bike racing, what do you look forward to here? Obviously, Las Vegas is a, we'll say, a, yeah. weird, a weird city. Yeah. Um, but what do you do here? What do you enjoy when you make this trip? Well, it's another culture. Um, it's nice to, um, to talk with, with, with uh, people of, of another country and, and uh, how they work, how they live. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's nice to, to, uh, to travel and, and to, to, see, uh, to see some uh, pieces of the, of the world and, yeah. and uh, the nature and, and yeah, it's, it's nice to... Uh, um, that's, that's what cyclocross for me is right now, that I can see the world also. Yeah, and, and now this season in particular, racing for Trek, uh, an American company, how did, tell me about this, the decision to, to go with that team, an American squad. Um, well, it's a big change for you. Yeah, it's a big change, um, but it was the right uh, time at the right moment. Um, Trek wants to do something special in cyclocross. They developed a brand new bike, mm -hmm. um, and at that moment I could sign a contract with them. I talked with them and they were really motivated to do something special in cyclocross, uh, to help me to, uh, yeah, to, to, to create uh, another dimension in cyclocross. And yeah, I, I need to say that uh, after one year, I'm really proud I took the decision um, and, and it helped me um, develop myself also and, and, and the bike. And, and um, definitely when I'm riding now with an American bike, mm -hmm. it helps also uh, the interest of, of yeah. cyclocross over here. Tell me, so again, we know a lot, we know so much about your career. Tell me something we don't know. It's summertime, it's not the season, maybe you're not training. What do you do? What do you like to do? Well, I think the big difference is that I'm, what, I, what I like is, is riding my bike. Even when it's, it's holiday, yeah. I'm, I'm an athlete. Uh, 365 days a year. Uh, I'm always thinking about my food. I'm always thinking about uh, staying healthy. Uh, being an athlete, uh, of, of course, I'm, uh, I'll, after, the, after the, the season, I, I go with my family uh, on a holiday and, mm -hmm. and uh, to the Dominican Republic or went out for skiing. Mm -hmm. But I'm always thinking that I'm an athlete and that's necessary to stay as strong as I am now on, on my age. Um, don't drop how you say it in English, don't drop too, too low yeah. after the season because it's a hard job to come, come back. back up. Uh, so I stay on a certain level a whole year and it helps me to, um, yeah, to pick up directly and to have directly good results in the beginning of the, of the summer season. So I do some road races, I do some uh, mountain bike races on a high level um, and rest of my life it's it's like a normal life uh, hang out with with my friends uh, uh, or with the family uh, going to a restaurant uh, all things a normal yeah. guy is doing uh, I live in, in a in a small town where I I coming out um, to the bakery to the to the to the shops like a normal guy yeah so it's nothing special is it tell me one thing that would surprise people to know about you we know how serious you are. We know how great of an athlete you are. Well, that I'm not always uh, that serious, that I can have fun, that I can uh, enjoy my life. Uh, mm. uh, going out for a party mm -hmm. in the summer. It's, it's, uh, I was a DJ on a party in, in my town uh, <laughs> um, late night and uh, it was really fun. So I enjoy my life. I, I do what I want to do. Uh, and it's necessary to, uh, to have fun also because otherwise it's, it's not possible to stay as good as I am right now on this level. Mm. A lot of people finish their racing career and we never hear from them again. I assume yeah. that won't be the case with you. No, my dream is to uh, develop the sport, but also um, what I learned 
um, pick it up and, and give it to the young guys. Uh, we bought a piece of land uh, where the race is on the 1st of January, my, my own race. Yeah. We bought it uh, and we're going to uh, create um, uh, race courses for mountain bike, BMX, cyclocross, uh, a testing center, uh, a museum. Um, a touristic part where uh, older people can drink something and see the young guys train over there. So it's a development uh, area where we can um, yeah, we develop young, young riders, maybe uh, come over from the US and uh, uh, put them in an hotel and, 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 and um, train with them, mm -hmm. learn them the skills. And that's my dream, that's my goal. And hopefully everything is, is ready when I finish my career. So we built now uh, uh, a, new, a new house uh, on top of the, of the small mountain where, where it is. And um, that's where it's going to start. So I'm really proud that, it, that we can do something like that. Yeah. And that we can develop the sport even when I stopped also after my career. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Well, thanks for having me.